Hey everyone, so back with another video, this time on the California Seismic Exam for the PE. Uh, so the Seismic Exam is one of three exams along with the 8-hour PE and the Engineering Surveying Exam that you have to pass in California to get your PE license. I wrote all three in April of this year, 2017, and found out I passed all three first try. So here I am sharing what I did to prepare and give you some tips that will hopefully help you pass as well. So I'll start and talk a little bit about the exam itself, the pass rates, the topics that are on the exam, and the passing score. I'll give a short review of the Heiner's workbook and how to use it. And I'll wrap it up with some advice for you to take or leave as you see fit. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, so let's talk about the exam. It's 55 questions, all are equal weight, and there's no penalty for guessing. It's two and a half hours long, which even if you hammer through every question, it still doesn't seem like enough time. Similar to the surveying exam, that's definitely one of the most challenging aspects. And because of these time constraints, if you don't know the answer, honestly, just guess and move on. Although I'd still flag it in case you do end up having time to revisit it at the end. Um, the Prometric Test Center lets you take a tutorial on their system before the exam starts. I recommend you take it so you know how to highlight important information, cross out wrong answers, and flag questions for review later. And historically, the pass rate is in the 30% range, which is low, and it's lower than surveying. And I think that's a combination of the time constraints as well as the subject matter being more difficult. But uh, I'll get into that a little bit later. And apparently, you need around 55% to pass, but honestly, who knows? They don't publish those cut scores anymore, and anyone who claims they know that formula they use to determine the cut score is probably full of it. Uh, I would just aim high and don't waste too much time worrying about the cut score because that's valuable time you could be using to practice. Now, as far as calculators, uh, similar to the surveying exam, you don't have the same restrictions as you do for the PE. But honestly, you should probably just use the same one you've been practicing for the PE since you probably are already used to it and you won't need any fancy functions that would justify the switch. Now for the important part, preparation. In my opinion, the seismic exam is the most challenging of the three PE exams. I did my master's basically in earthquake engineering and I still found that I needed a lot, needed to put in a lot of time to prepare properly. Mostly because the exam is heavily weighted towards what's in the building codes rather than anything too advanced as far as earthquake engineering topics go. But on the bright side, I think it's the most straightforward of the three exams to prepare for. I recommend that you use Heiner's book. It covers everything on the exam and other than the actual ASC E7 and IBC building codes, it's all you're really going to need during the exam. Uh, it covers all the topics. <clears throat> it's very clear. It offers a lot of helpful hints. It has tables for quick lookup of values and it has an excellent in index. And at the end it has hundreds of multiple choice questions with solutions that are remarkably similar to what you're going to see on, on the exam. I think if you cover all the material in this book start to finish you're going to pass no problem. I would personally set aside maybe 50 hours to cover all of the topics in, in the Heiner book, tab everything out, and tab out the respective sections in the building codes. Um, at the end of each chapter, I would definitely do the long form questions that he provides at the end of the book. Uh, that's really going to solidify all the topics in, in, in your head. And then after that, I would spend another maybe 30 to 50 hours just hammering the multiple choice questions at the end as hard as you can uh, until you feel confident and you've got the timing down. They are very similar to what you're going to see on the exam. You basically need to cover every chapter in the Heiner book, uh, except for chapter 13. Uh, and chapters 4 to 9 are definitely the most heavily weighted, so spend some extra time on those. Don't breeze over them. Um, I also recommend considering taking his online course or at least buying his online webinars. They're $150 per webinar. I bought three of four of them. I found them very helpful, but more importantly, if you buy the 
the webinar. You can cover the material at your own pace. And he gives you he gives you the relevant sections of the building codes with the important information highlighted. And that is extremely useful during, during the exam. And even more importantly, he gives you a summary of, of equations and, and what they mean and what the variables mean. And that is invaluable during the exam because there's so many equations and so many variables and you don't want to waste any time looking any of those up. Um, if you choose not to use a workbook or take a course, I think really the best thing you can do is just flip through the codes and highlight things that you think are important or that match the specifications that you can download from the website. But honestly, I don't recommend it because it's not going to be effective and it's going to take you forever. So those are my recommendations for the seismic exam. In my opinion, it's the most challenging of the three PE exams. Look, if you're a structural engineer and you regularly deal with the seismic provisions of the codes, maybe you don't need a workbook or, or need to take a course. And even if you're not a structural engineer, of course, you can still pass without a workbook or, or a course. It's just going to be a lot more difficult and it's going to take a lot longer. Otherwise, I definitely rec recommend it and I felt that the webinars and the workbook were both worth it. I didn't take a course for the 8-hour PE, nor did I take a course for the surveying exam, and I passed both first try, no, no problem. The seismic exam really was the only one that I felt the course was need needed, and it allowed me to pass first try on that one as well. And especially if your employer is willing to cover the cost, then I'd say it's a no-brainer. So with that, I wish you guys all the best, and I encourage you to come back and share your thoughts in the comments below. I really do think that these types of discussions are beneficial for everyone. And with that being said, good luck.